Uh, yo guys, welcome back to another podcast. I'm joined once again by Hanoi. Uh, yeah, hi guys, I'm Agam here. <laughs> we don't have to do a proper intro this time. It's good times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, this will be um, kind of like uh, more messy when it comes to introductions, but uh, I think, I hope it will be more concise and like helpful when it comes to actual stuff yeah we what will time. try and be concise obviously we're pretty sure of that right now but we shall see yeah to be honest it's like the i think the third or maybe the fourth uh time we are speaking so um it will it will definitely get better uh also um uh, about the uh, comments on our first video, there was a comment made uh, 30, 13 uh, hours ago that from Richard Gallagher that Hanoi needs to speak slower and try to enunciate more. His accent isn't too bad, but he exacerbates it by speaking quickly and running it word into the next makes him very hard for me to understand all right so this is um helpful uh very helpful to me uh richard and i will try to um sound as clear as possible um yeah yeah so i think you're sounding better feedback. today yes and feedback is very welcome I mean, yeah, this is like the first time you're doing stuff online as well. Like, I've been making videos for probably yes. over a year now. <laughs> I know, I was very, very unclear for a long time. Yeah, only talking about like, you know, the, with uh, not not public videos, but like with private people on Facebook. And I think it is uh, it is more clear to, to hear someone on Facebook or like over the phone, even if you are not speaking, uh, you are not the native English speaker. Right. I think, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess first thing we wanted to talk about was the new patch, which mm -hmm. obviously dropped a few days after I started my new series, after I waited for it for like a week. <laughs> so that was great. But yeah, obviously, uh, still appreciate the patch. It's not a huge one by the looks of it. Mostly just bug fixes from, I think a lot of which was done by Iterol. And obviously it's quite hard to comment on that stuff because it's just like, see how well it works compared to how it did yeah. before. A um, couple of balance changes though. First one is the founder belief. Way of the Pilgrim has been nerfed a bit. That's fair enough to be honest. Yeah, I don't really use it too often, so I can say that if it is uh, going to be huge. But yeah, people were complaining that it is a little too uh, overpowered in the late game. Yeah, it's it's just a weird one. I mean, it's not as good as it used to be because a few patches ago when all the AIs had the massive amount of food bonus, then it was quite a lot because it scales with the amount of population yeah. of their cities basically but like recently i feel like it hasn't been that good it's definitely not what it used to be like it used to be like completely game winning but now it's like yeah i don't e i don't yeah. even know if it was good to be honest but it's probably not good anymore <laughs> uh yeah because um the whole religion stuff and especially like pressure and spreading yeah. works completely different yeah. and most of my days I am ending with uh, not only fast and good religion but in a situation when which in uh, my religion gets like 30 or 40 cities and uh, many many other cities that I still uh, in the hands of AIs don't have any majority religion so yeah it is definitely um, completely different. Yeah. It used to be like they would all have cities with their own religions of like 30 pop or yeah. something and they would inquisitor sometimes. And yeah, for those who don't know, this scales with the amount of followers of other religions. So it's quite a weird one because you actually deliberately send missionaries 
to cities with a really high majority of other religions and try not to convert them. It's just quite weird generally. I'm not sure I I really like it in general, but it shouldn't be overpowered anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't um uh, I wasn't liking it anyway because of uh, its early game strength, which is which it is relatively lacking in. So um like you get literally nothing for your uh, cities and uh, for your development. It's not like production or science or culture and food. So, um, and scales are really bad at the beginning. So, yeah. 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 And then uh, tribute values adjusted upwards. Yeah, I mean, they were very low. That was like one of the first things I saw actually on this patch. I was like, <laughs> they're going to be shit because I think it's 50 at the start, which is... It, that's a max tribute is worth 50 at the start and i think it goes up to like 400 or something so 50 at the start is reasonable but 400 at the end of the game is just absolutely irrelevant so <laughs> yes I, i'm guessing that's been changed a bit yeah many times it was more uh valuable to get gold and uh get like sooner quests because of the decay of uh, the influence than to get straight production, which would can be irrelevant by some point in, uh, for example, early or late classical, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I've barely done any tributes, to be honest. Just because, yeah, you're, you're missing out on city-state quests that can be pretty good, and it just yeah. doesn't give enough. Um, tech speed as well. I'm guessing this means the later techs have been increased in cost, which a lot of people have been complaining about. And I think I agree with that in principle. Like, a lot of times the late game tech can go pretty quickly, and it's a bit of a shame to miss out on that part of the game. Or just get skipped over. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Thoughts? A border growth now instead of just science. They were quite ridiculous last patch in the amount of science you could get if you had imperialism and autocracy as well, which both give bonus science to forts. I think it was up in 15 or or more, even like 18 <laughs> by the end of the game, which is like yeah. an academy. Horrible to, yeah, academy, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, good, good thing it's uh, a- in the long run, I think. Yeah, they needed nerfing. I don't know how useful this border growth is going to be, though, because by the time you to have thoughts... Honest, it's... Yeah, I think that border growth is already very um quick in many of my games. So, yeah. Um, and I really, I am not like a person who would uh, make a lot of forts to, and have a lot of citizens to work. Uh, them on so I replace them like only in uh, situations when I know I will be finding or I will be defending so I'm not going to say that uh, it is as important for me yeah I mean I feel like by that point in the game you just buy tiles like if you actually need a tile Uh, yeah definitely Uh, Spain rework I don't actually know what it is. I think it's been made less OP, basically, because Spain was probably one of the top powerful civs before. Mm, yes, it was made uh, more flexible. You are not kind of uh, forced to settle or conquer cities to gain fruit and pay, which is, I think, uh, good in a sense that you can now play tradition of Spain, because uh, it is scaling with... Uh, like you get faith and gold, if I remember correctly, for uh, expanding your borders. So, in fact, tradition can be um, can benefit really uh, widely from that gold for uh, investing in buildings and wonders. I think you're you're moving the mic or something. Um, no, I was I was playing with uh, the something that with my hands so that it is uh, the, the metallic sound yes like this yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I <laughs> okay um yeah 
Did you did you ever see that post somebody did about the border growth speed a while ago? Um, I don't remember. Basically, they they actually made a graph out of the uh, border growth, like uh-huh. uh huh, speed, like with the tradition policy and without. Yes, I believe this is it. Uh really but to be honest is it that accurate i mean the tradition is definitely not the only thing that will give you a boost to the growth expansion you get basically the same from um Angkor Wat and from um of uh, I think Russia playing Russia is of course the and the Pantheon, yeah, uh, God of the Expanse. Yeah, but no, that's the thing because basically each of the those give minus twenty five, right? So it's yeah. like applied flatly, so minus twenty five percent. But this zero point eight, the the one from uh, sovereignty is a zero point eight. Uh, times exponent thing and it basically just has way more effect than the other ones uh, so I think this these bottom uh-huh. two are with sovereignty and the top two are without sovereignty and then like the lower one is with the monument so you can see the difference a monument makes and then the difference that the sovereignty policy makes yeah and I, I can so, kind of vouch for this because when I played Venice, I had the sovereignty policy and I ran out of tiles to for my borders to grow to by like medieval era. Oh. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> so the five like tiles from a, from a city in every direction. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I rarely see in my normal tradition game even for the capital to run out of uh, the tiles. Really? Um, yeah, at least not when my cities are not within... Uh, not when my cities are within a free tile radius from the capital. Yeah. Because I, um, I usually tend to spread myself a little bit more. Um, so, yeah... So there is a difference between Uncle Watt and uh, God of the Expanse. No, it is I, I think minus they're 25. the same. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, between both Uncle Watt and uh, um, God of the Expanse and like uh, tradition policy. Yes. So you, so these ones where it says Uncle Watt and Russia, that's how those ones are applied. But then. The sovereignty thing is is a different yeah. modifier, and it does a lot more, I think. So there is no kind of the expanse in our, our calculation mentioned. I think it might be the GR. No, the GR I think is the uh, unique Mongolian um, granary, which also gives you twenty five percent on a. Uh, on uh, the border growth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure where I got all the expenses. To be honest. But I know that sovereignty is very powerful. So <laughs> that could definitely be a strategy with Spain. Yeah. Uh of course there was also like strategy before to use uh sovereignty with going full autocracy yeah uh, which uh no no autocracy oh, i mean uh authority of course yeah <laughs> so uh like it's um it scales uh it's like synergized very well yeah, it does. Other. so it uh, from the looks of it it would synergize much more with sovereignty than from building anchor world yes but to be honest, like I don't think it is it is an issue, and I don't think it is a balance issue because tradition will need that 
tiles, especially in the capitals, to like grab all the resources because you don't want to um, make work normal tiles. You want to put yeah, I said I, I should put out this paper clip out of my uh range because <laughs> it is uh it is online probe. So you, I, I forget about it. Uh <laughs> but yeah. So the thing is um with authority you will not have us uh good cities and us um high population cities and you will mostly work um uh, production tiles to get your units fast so and to get the good uh, development in your buildings uh, so i don't think it is a real balance issue yeah i i don't know i honestly don't know yeah i mean it's not like hugely powerful for tradition to have fast border growth but i guess in combination with with something like spain or with the tribute policy from authority can be a bit weird and the thing i said before about the running out of tiles so early on that did feel a bit annoying to be honest because i was like i can't get any more bonuses for the rest of the game yeah so i think with a uh, pineapple dance uh rework of spain it's case of era so yes uh, you will not uh like it's delaying your early yields for a more power powerful later yields yeah but because the gold and uh, the fate is crucial for especially for tradition and uh um especially like classical era and the ancient era i think it would be uh best uh, strategy anyway to grab all the land uh, as soon as possible and get the faster religion and faster enhance uh, yeah. faster spreading yeah uh, you can end up with a lot of faith late game without needing like some bonus ones as long as you've got your religion up and running and yeah. stuff. And uh, more great persons, which includes all of great persons, if I remember correctly. So uh, it 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 is not only giving you like uh, great generals that will be named instead of getting a great general called the great general. It will get you also the ability to get more great works of writing, uh, of arts and um, of music. Yeah, that, is, that was the um, main huge. reason for it. So uh, it was running out before, and obviously it's annoying if you have one and you can't make another great work. Mm, yeah, maybe for some people, I think mostly from industrial or modern era i bought any of my specialists uh many of my great people anyway yeah true um, but you still want to have the option like it's not nice that you can't yeah, for no real reason yeah i mean is the um is the name of the great people something you look at <laughs> no i i haven't um really? but yeah kind of only i think um well, it's good to have a good named general when you are playing set of faction, right. and uh, because I, I um, like enjoy military history, so this is definitely the one. O of course, the, um, the artists sometimes are when they align with your like cultural stuff with your civilization. It's it's nice, but it is not like most of them will be from. Something like ancient Chinese culture, which is really? for many of the uh, Western people. Yeah, I, I see the many uh, literature and uh, artworks are from China, China or from Japan, and they are um, like unknown in the West. So I feel like less connected to them, but they are, uh, I think, uh, a good way to like uh, get to know something different than western art canon yeah yeah cool i mean um that's something it's like a nice part of the game it's one of those things yeah like, i'm one of those people that just ignores that stuff because i'm too focused on what i'm <laughs> doing but it is nice to take stuff like that in yeah i, I kind of do mm, i'm kind of a guy who is like um 
enjoying the um, like lore uh, of a civilization. Of course, it is very loosely based on reality. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I like to pick uh, certain factions yeah. uh, when I am playing a certain faction as my enemies, for example. So, yeah, definitely something something good. Fair enough. All right. Well, that was mildly brief, but mildly not really that brief. Um, the next thing we wanted to talk about was your game that you've been playing. So I guess it will be kind of a game analysis thing, but there should be quite a lot yeah. to talk about in here. Um, yeah, basically we can start with... Uh, uh, maybe we can start with a starting location. I will send that one to you on our Discord. Yeah, okay. Uh, because it's quite interesting. Um, I was kind of clueless, to be honest, uh, what to do with my initial um, location. Yes. Because it looked like shit, like total one. So, um, but it was a copper monopoly. So, as a copper monopoly, um, it is generally the strong one for tradition, I think. It is strong for any type of victory. Yeah. But tradition benefits, uh, I think, the most. And of course, the, the early production is great. So now I am sending that to you. Yeah, I really like having production as tradition. That's honestly one of the things I look for in a tradition start is a decent amount of production because you can get the food and culture and stuff from the policies, but you don't get much production. Yeah, basically, I didn't make a single farm and uh, and this like through uh, in my uh, capital yeah. and mostly to be honest I had like five farms in my whole empire no maybe not even five I think maybe two or three um, so <laughs> yeah it's kind of ridiculous farms are a bit yeah yeah um okay so you started yeah you're on a marsh which is a bit interesting. I feel like I know, so you kind of wanted to do a, a Tundra playthrough and see how good it was. Yeah, completely like going into Tundra, having my um, a tradition capital completely on the Tundra. So yeah, uh, it worked. So, but I mean, this start must have been a bit like weird because you haven't got any actually good tiles and, unless you want to move off the marsh and use that one. Um, yeah, so the thing is, if you are going to roll start like this, you are praying or revealing of a lot of deer. Yeah. <laughs> there is no other option. And of course, stone would be nice. Yeah. Uh, and if you are not going to get a lot of these, you are basically screwed because the next, uh, the next tech that can, uh, like uh, make your game a little better or a little better would be iron walking with uh, iron. Yeah. Uh, and you are not going to get it fast on a tradition start. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but basically, because of uh, there's a pantheon called Star God of Stars and Sky, which is absolutely great. It is. To be honest, one of the best pantheons in the game, if not the best. Um, it gives you for unimproved resources, uh, the one faith, one culture, one uh, one food, and one gold. Uh, and you can make uh, like you don't have to really care about food if you will have a lot of deer and a lot of uh like resources they can be iron they can be mining resources you will still get not only production but also gold food culture and faith so you are not really dependent on this food i don't like really farms unless i play with uh flute planes because like there's only so much you can grow because you will not like exceed eight citizens anyway, even if not going for any settler in the first part of the game, unless you have more text and more improved tiles. Right. So uh, there's absolutely no reason to work this food. 
uh, this food um, tiles. And the culture phase called and a lot of production tiles is what you are um, like want to pr prioritize. So yeah, I think this pantheon is absolutely exceptional for for this. Yeah, I mean, getting plus one culture per tile is just nuts, and uh, obviously the food makes up for the the minus one food that a tundra fi a tile naturally has compared to a grassland. So. Yeah, so this is after the first uh, the first big thing, which was of course the uh, deer, the drop in. Yeah, uh, I was disappointed to say it very um, like uh, politely oh, because three I is only right. get <laughs> yeah three in in total range of my capital. And to be honest, also I want to talk about the uh, the, the marble. Uh, before I will uh, forget about it, because I knew I, when I moved my settler, uh, not the settler, uh, the um, warrior and scout, I knew on the first turn that, that marble was uh, there. Really? So I made a like conscious decision to not go for the marble for my capital. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if you. I would agree with that, but I would have to move a lot, and I wanted to settle in place because I want as much resources as possible. Uh, that yeah. was the first thing. And yeah, I get you. Of course, uh, some people would like. Um, they could say I should move to the uh, like one tile west. Because I would have a marsh with free food on my right. I would have a mining immediately instead of setting on that uh, on that uh, marsh, and I would have a marble in my uh, in my uh, capital. So yeah, I kind of agree with that. That could be viable, but I like. Um, I was more, more concerned about the forest tile, uh, tiles because I wanted a lot of deer. So uh, I could see that there are uh, grassland, which I didn't want. It. I wanted as much uh, tundra stuff for my yearly tiles to get used uh, uh, like up to my pantheon. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted the deer because I know that I knew the deer was my like game break start because it will me and it will give me enough food to work those mines quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that was my reasoning. Yeah, fair enough. I th I guess one thing is uh, deer only spawns in forest, at least on most yeah. map types. So if you move away from the forest, then you're not going to have any yes. deer in here. Exactly. Um, yeah, um, marble is really nice though for the for the production bonus to wonders when your tradition. So it um, is a trade off. I agree, but first of all, this marble anyway would be very long to get. Uh, I don't know, but uh, many times the uh, like border growth don't like to go to marble. Yeah, you'd have to buy it. Uh, Yes. Uh, the other thing is marble. That marble is not at all good. Uh, even with improvement, it just gives you a little more production. So it would be like free production to food, which is kind of not great. I like marble a lot when I can settle by it yeah. when it is on a hill, uh, when I'm finishing. Yeah. Uh, well, what I normally do with a uh... With marble, I think when I'm tradition is I normally use the great engineer. I think to yeah. put a manufactory on it because the actual quarry, like you said, is not well. It's plus two. Yeah, but still on a flat land, it will be only two uh, two food free production. So yeah. this this kind of tile, you don't really want to work that tile for a long time because you either need one good high food tile or a couple of them and uh, the rest of them like with uh, 
giants or with very high production. Yeah. So normal mine is just flat out better after getting a forge or or uh, with stoneworks the normal stone is much better uh, because it can on a hill it gives you five production. Yeah, yeah, mines are really nice, aren't they? With uh with forges i think copper gives extra from the forge as well oh, it's like two yes. gold two gold but of course gold is not as good as production but it is very useful nonetheless for tradition true true especially coupled with the fact that many times copper is already on a hills so yeah you will get like uh another for the mine it will be in total seven production or six production yeah for the mine. and on top of that uh the Plus two gold. Um, yeah. yeah, so the main, the main reasoning was to stay uh, with the hills, uh, with the ton and with as much tundra and as much deer I could get. So the forest. And of course, I was kind of feeling like this can be a longer start with uh, when the lumbermans will get online. But as it happened in the game, I didn't build a single lumber mill and work at my capital. So, oh, really? Um, yeah. Weird. Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's always hard on first turn if you're trying to go for this because you don't know where the deer is. So it's, it's guesswork at the end of the day. Like You're always going to be annoyed that you miss something, but if you don't know it's there. Yeah, that was my exactly my feeling. Like for the first turns like that when i uh, also discovered that animal husbandry will give me not even a like a horse nearby yeah uh so it would be useless like i i had only two cities in which i bought the ducal stables as poland so um it's kind of hard because you don't have unique buildings if you uh don't have pastures yeah uh, and well you uh, can build them anyway right yeah, you can build them anyway, but they give you nothing but a lot of production to invest and maintenance. It, they give you basically 100 culture, which for tradition is irrelevant, <laughs> and one free horse, which with the current prices of uh, current prices of strategic strategics are not even worth uh, selling because the AIs will many times will give you only one gold for six horses. So, <laughs> Well, they'll, they'll usually give, give you good. one for one if you if you do it individually at least, but it's still not great. Um, it depends when you are like in a good position, they will hate you anyway, like right many times. But yeah, you you, you are, uh, are right that it mostly depends on where you stand with them diplomatically. Uh, but yeah, I was kind of disappointed. I wanted my uh capital to be more close to the west side i would get marble i would get a uh, much more tundra uh, deer uh also tundra bison and tundra mines uh, with two coppers the same as i as i got yeah uh, so yeah that was a little disappointing i guess it's not least. too bad because as tradition you do need to work the specialists anyway and then you could just put your your next city can work all of this stuff if you put it yeah there. yeah that is that is correct this is my reasoning but uh anyway it was disappointing because i was doing the my first tundra tradition start so i was thinking like my food is going to be horrible and i ended up with the biggest city uh, i think in, uh, in the game so very quickly so Fair it enough. was not that but Okay, this is, I think, of course, when I, uh, like, when you are on the start like this, the, when it comes to tech tree, there's only two possibilities. Either you go granary first to get, because, of course, before you want to open tradition, you want the four pop. Um, and, yeah, I thought that because there was no uh, wheat, uh, there would be no good in going into granary. That uh, deer will get me more food than granary. And the second thing is, of course, the wheel, because uh, I will not risk uh, not getting God of Stars and Sky on this game. Basically, this game would be over without this Pantheon. Yeah. 
And I don't mean like completely over, but it's over when you are uh, set, when you settle in this place and want to go into tradition. This uh, early faith and culture and food is just uh, crucial to get the, all those uh, tiles working. Yeah. Have you ever seen an AI take uh, Stars and Sky? Like, oh yeah. On the last patch, they uh, get a lot of. Uh, it is like the, the most taken pantheon in my games. Oh, so really? I know. Yeah, God of the Expanse and God of Stars and Sky are really popular. Wow. Uh, in my game, there were three, uh, three AIs. Including me, like three players, who get a Tundra Heavy start. So uh, it was Sweden and it was, I think, Russia. So yeah, yeah it is definitely something that that AI wants and and I will get. So I mean, if you want to beat them to it, did you did you go? You went monument then shrine. Is that enough? Um. I think I don't remember if it was Monument and Shrine. I think it might be it. I think it must uh, be because you you check... you've got three faith, so it must have been the shrine was just built now. Yeah, but uh, I wasn't going like usually. I would go straight into Wheel and go Monument Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I had a uh, good production tiles and I knew like. Um, I knew the deer uh, would need to be uh, revealed first. I yeah. take the wheel as second one. I wanted to reveal also a lot of stone because uh, many times there are a lot of stone on Tundra. Yeah. So that would be help me with stone. It wasn't uh, the case. So <laughs> it was a little uh, dull start, but uh, I got a lot of, a lot of ruins. Yeah. Um, I think, but I think I wasn't for population when I had tradition. Uh, I think this is the this is the moment I opened tradition. So yes, I it is do. not like yeah, it, it's normally good to to finish that fault. It's normally good to have for population before you open tradition. But it is as this game is showing the it is not like a requirement to have a good tradition. But, yeah, I wonder if you could have actually gone for the shrine first and then the monument after, and then um, because you are Poland, so the yeah. policy is not such a big deal as it as it would be. Yeah, and of course the pantheon would give me straight around five uh, culture and my capital from yeah. working with all stars. Yeah, that would be possible, but. Um, I wanted to get Stonehenge and Strong Religion anyway, because Stonehenge is just a very good wonder for tradition, I think, right now. Yeah, so uh, so, so you still built Stonehenge after this? Of course. Uh, okay. And it was, it was from Stonehenge that I secured my Pantheon. Okay. It, wa it wasn't from the uh, shrine, yeah. And uh, I always go Monument first. That is my basic policy. I never go shrine first. Really? Uh, if I am authority, I don't want to be delayed uh, until because many times, even when I go, uh, like uh, if I go monument first, I am trapped in a situation when I have barbarians to kill, and I don't want to kill them until I will open authority and get culture. So yeah. And the uh, progress is just great because it gives you a free tech, basically. It gives you a very fast uh, worker, so I don't want to delay that either. I will mostly go Monument into Stonehenge in many of my games on this path. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're getting Stonehenge, then, of course, you go for the Monument first. I would. I don't agree on progress, especially because you get the retroactive rewards anyway. So if you get the first one a bit later, you pretty much still get the same amount of science and culture. Yeah, but I can tell you why the progress is good for 
of the science faster, uh, at least in my opinion, because it can give you um, more resources to reveal. And I want to have them revealed when I will be taking my Pantheon, especially because I uh, like to go with something like God of the Open Sky, which yeah. can be uh, made or broken with uh, uh, enough pastures. So yeah, I usually like uh, going moment first and I really see no virtue and uh, trying first, but this you have to like take into account that the other uh, the other play styles are completely fine. Just I uh, I like the stunners very well, so I kind of am uh, uh, secured in a way of religion of getting the pumping under the wall. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but I, not I, always. I, but not always, of course. I don't go Stonehenge as much as you. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Are we gonna? <laughs> we have had a long discussion about this already, but uh, yeah, if you're gonna go Stonehenge, you get shrine, or you get monument. I don't always go Stonehenge, so that's why sometimes I would get shrine. But st- still, I probably most of the time do go monument, or well, definitely most of the time. But I'm not sure the exact percent. Yeah, I definitely agree that Stonehenge is. Um one of the strongest wonders in the game right now yeah uh so and it is because it is basically uh warranted especially when playing tradition um i just i just always want to get it this great engineer point is great to um to uh have the engineer in time with a uh, tradition policy to get an engineer to uh, get hanging gardens or the great library also yeah uh, it just gives you a lot because it gives you a, a free shrine a free council a free party on one culture one great engineer point um it just and and of course you deny all of the same to the ai so yeah true uh, it it is just strong i don't think there's much better use of your hamas uh, in the early game, because many times uh, getting a settler when you are like for a population even before opening tradition, sometimes it's just not, not not that good. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, you could be right that it's worth getting almost all the time. I don't know why I don't. To be honest, I think I just feel <laughs> like it's a bit too greedy sometimes. But I can see that the free shrine and council and plus one culture is like an early pantheon is obviously yeah, all pretty good stuff. You are getting the other shrine anyway, so yeah. This phase just accrues very well. Fair enough. Um Okay, let's move on to the next Yes, next save. So is this the religion one or Oh uh, no, I think the siege one. Because this is the the interesting save of the barbs. Okay, there's a one about settler. Do you want to? I think this is later. It says it's thirty four. Yeah, and seat one is. Oh no! So yeah, so the first settler is the is the correct save to go with. Oh, actually, uh... okay. No, we'll 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 come to the barb stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come to the Bob stuff. Like, I think this this one will be quicker. Mm. Okay, so you can now see my the yields and on the uh, tiles in my capital and the general yields from the capital if you open it. It is just amazing yeah. what the Pantheon uh, God of Stars and Sky is, is uh, like doing to my capital. Yeah, probably. Compared to flipping... Um... <laughs> the camp one as well it's just so <laughs> compared to this yeah i think it should be buffed in a situation <laughs> like either the the other one should be nerfed or the goddess of the hunt buffed but like of the hunt can be competitive if you have mixed uh like bison uh and uh bison and for example uh deer and uh like furs or Truffles luxury, 
Yeah. But because of this delay, I think it should be just made uh, either stronger or just uh, without the camp. Like from the camp uh, luxuries and resources, but without actual camp. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? But I, I think it is it is not possible to code something like that. You have uh, to tie it either for the improvement or for the uh, terrain. It, it would be possible, I think, but just like kind of messy compared to yeah. the current stuff. So, yeah, so first settler, I'm guessing, did you know where you wanted to go with it or you were debating yes. things? Yes, uh, because I had this Pantheon, uh, the first location would be, uh, I don't know which one I settled first, but I think I settled the, oh, I know, uh, the uh, not this location, but to the west, with the amber and a lot of stone. Oh, further over? Yes, this, this one uh, up from between the deer and an amber on the Tantra. Between this is the deer and what? Oh, amber. between the deer and amber. Okay. Yeah, this 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 tile. Um, I was kind of uh, thinking about also getting better location for the stables to get to grab the cattle, but I thought the defensive location uh, because of the forest and the hills. From the Sweden, because you already see the uh, Stockholm on the in the west, very close. Yeah, uh, I wanted it to be uh, to be behind this amber hill. Uh, I think in this situation, settling on the amber would be incorrect because the city would be terribly exposed to catapults and to archers yeah, from the true. flatlands. Yeah. True. They aren't going to be able to catapult you there from anywhere, like, around here. They'd have to go here. Yeah, and I can, like, have my army in the forest to the east. And generally, if I control the Umber Hill, the uh, tile, uh, like, to the forest, to the north, and to the uh, grassland, to the south, uh, I can completely... uh, to find the city and also the city it would be great because all of this stone all of this amber all of these deers would be immediately productive yeah because of the tundra and sky so i don't have to uh, like think about the food i i only have to think about production because all these tires would have food and culture yeah and faith anyway so this was a great starting location i think for the second city yep I agree with that. I mean, yeah, that's basically of the. Of course, it look crazy. It looks crazy. It does look weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the the logic usually is like, where can I be catapulted from? Because that's the way you're going to lose your cities normally. So, if you can make it so that they either have to come here or over here, where you are most likely to have your army, then it's obviously going to be quite difficult for them. I guess the other. I did. I once had a game where I was playing against Greece, and I kind of yeah. did a similar thing. And someone had a go at me, basically saying, "You've done it wrong because you've put your city next to the defensive tiles, so that they can put their melee units in there, and you won't be able <laughs> to kill them." Yeah, and that's uh, that's exactly what you want them to do because the, the melee units will be stuck in the they will not be able to shuffle like the units because of the movement points. Right. So uh, I think it is the, the best thing to do because many times there were wars when just one swordsman or something like that was sitting on that umber hill and just healing himself. Yeah. And uh, if they would want to uh, like remove him and put another guy, we would just already move, lose movement points so you can... Uh, wear him down with the archers before he will attack. Yeah, they they don't really like attacking when they're not full health as well. That's something yes. that's quite common. So if you uh, hit their units, they won't do a melee attack normally. 
So yeah, you want you don't want to block them their attacks. You don't want to block their um, like uh, ability to hit you. You want to block their movement because the movement of the units, if you can like choke point them when they will have uh, 20 units, you will have five, but they can only hit you, them, uh, you your units with two of their units yeah. against two or three of your units. So that's the reason. Uh, and of course, the movement on the north is also like prohibited by snow. Yeah, and by Vancouver. So yeah, yeah, you want them as an ally for sure to help out. Yeah, exactly. Um, to be honest, I was kind of uh, relieved when uh, the uh, open door to Vancouver passed because uh, the the city is positioned in, in, in that way that Swedes could easily take Vancouver and then have much more room to attack my city from so yeah it was kind of good that that but in the early game yeah it, it would help not after our artillery or something like that yeah then allying Vancouver would it, it is the same that Kathmandu uh like suffered Kathmandu is a little bit south yeah it was my ally I couldn't do anything about the fact that it was my ally and it felt the sweet Swedes because I had no uh, room to move my units behind it because of the sea. Yeah. Yeah, city states are weird. Sometimes they're like, <laughs> well, they look like they're ready to defend, and then a few turns later they're just getting completely mauled, and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <happened> there? <laughs> Basically, after they will lose all of their units because the AI is targeting units first, the city is lost. Yeah. Very quickly. So. I guess they don't have anywhere to actually retreat to properly. Yeah. And no natural barriers from the west. It's just an open plain. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, yeah, makes sense. I mean, you're going to have, what, 10 resources, this? Maybe more with iron? <laughs> One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, basically, wow. with a Sandra start, it makes something like this. You will have a nine or eight good resources. And because of the iron and uranium and aluminium is all aluminum is all um, like heavily placed by the map scripts on uh, uh, deserts and tantra. Yeah, uh, the most scarce resources are uh, placed in a uh, like harder areas. Uh, it will be it will continue to be to be very great city. Yeah. Yeah, and the second city I made uh, by the cattle, uh, if you see the marble, you have uh, the cattle southwest, and by the river to the west after the forest. It, it was completely uh, like defended by the forest from the west. Not the tile, but the tile, two tiles west from it. Um, this one? Yes, this one. Okay. It was, it was a longer, like... Uh, calculation because I wanted to be more I wanted to deny more territory from the Swedes yeah. I wanted also the city to have two cattle and two stone with uh, marble to to get to, so I can build ducal stables and stoneworks but because of course the, the tiles on the west were kind of a stretch to say the least yeah uh, the, it, it didn't work and sweet it Sweden just took the those tiles from me. But I great generals uh after that, so it was kinda okay. And a very productive city also. Yeah. Sounds good. This is a good little border as well, I feel like, because you've got now you have like control over this area, which we were saying yeah. is where they would have to come to with their catapults. So you can have someone up here, particularly, doing good shit. Yeah, lots of forests, lots of rivers. It just uh, great for hindering AI movement. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think we can move to the next one. Uh, the another thing to like have in mind is that I uh, no, you can you can load the the uh, that I had in mind was I got like seven or eight ruins. 
Uh, so, but not not the best ones. I was not getting like population. I was not getting like te free text. Yeah. I only got one free text, I think. So it was mostly something like, and it, it wasn't also gold on the production. Yeah, that was kind of disaster. <laughs> uh, but th this archer died the next turn. I had absolutely no way to move him out from this archer on the hill. Yeah, he's got the uh, forest movement. Yeah, but he is on the hill, and I I can't move my archer, and they will target oh, yeah, the true. unit that will die. True. Yeah. So, um, like you see, all this uh, tiles that were improved before all this work is now gone. It would have to be rebuilt. But even on a deity, on a tundra tradition start, it is completely manageable. Uh, because by the end, by the end of like I am now, I am. 10, 10 techs and 5 policies ahead of the uh, second close AI, which was, uh, I think, uh, Arabia. And also Russia was very, very uh, powerful this game. But like you see, uh, I mostly got something like revealment of uh, more, I, I don't know, is, is there a kind of word like revealment or is it just reveal as a noun? Yeah, that that, uh, can, that can both work. Yeah, reveal the type like map the map thing. <laughs> yeah, as a verb, uh, like revealment as a noun. I don't know. A, I don't know if it's an actual say. word, but like it makes sense. I think. I, I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the uh, I was getting the like revealed of the map, which was not doing anything for me if I do it with uh, with scout that was uh, already up heavily upgraded yeah because scouts are anyway very not good at finding even if they are upgraded uh, from pathfinder well if you get survivalism three they are yeah but i i got only survival survivalism one because i wanted the scouting and the movement and to to get those win and to reveal the area so okay. yeah by this point, I was kind of desperate for something good to happen. <laughs> uh, my improved tiles are gone. I had to completely divert my tradition capital potential to uh, getting units, yeah. not getting wonders or getting something useful. Uh, I cannot move my settler. As you can see, I have a settler and he had to be held hostage in my capital for like five turns if he can if he uh good move yeah so yeah the situation was really tight and to be honest it it was not maybe so so bad i was also seeing the zealous on a the zealous on a south yeah uh, which kind of made me worrying about especially if i will conquer the kiev and settle the city also i have sweden on my uh, like another border, so yeah, um, it is not looking good, but mm -hmm. uh, it was completely manageable, uh, in the end. So, yeah, I was forced to go, as you can see in my text tree, if you will open that. Uh, I was kind of desperate to go mathematics and hanging garden, yeah. Uh, and if I remember correctly, I engineered that, oh, really, in many ways, uh. Like thanks to Stonehenge and to one uh, great engineer point. Uh, yeah, I was also, uh, of course, uh, working him. And after that, I was going straight for iron walking, which is not normally my normal uh, way to play on a uh, like map like this and one tradition, because uh, I want like new. Writing is not going to give me anything. I, I can't rush philosophy. I can't rush education right now. I need to get more tiles, especially with all those rich tiles. I need to get more tiles, which will give me one foot, one gold mine culture, and a lot of production. Yes. So I want that revealed. Uh, kind of unusual way to play as a tradition. So what are your thoughts? Know. Yeah, no, I see that because with a good pantheon that actually can yeah. make use of different tiles, like you can go somewhat more wide or less like 
just tool with wonders as you would normally with tradition if you had like god of beauty or something yeah where you just want to go from uh, wonder to wonder um yeah i see that like hanging gardens probably gives you the most and then i don't know what other wonder you'd go for unless i went for the oracle really i i like oracle a lot uh, Oracle also gave me gave me because I was behind in tech by this point. Yeah, so I also went my masonry uh, before getting a uh, writing because I wanted the terracotta army and I wanted the arenas. Yeah, terracotta uh, army as well. Wow. <laughs> yeah, terracotta army mostly because of the tile uh, improvement rate. Right? I had a lot of like less. Uh, not much gold, not much workers, and a lot of good tiles to improve. Yeah. Uh, and I and Budika built it before I even got finished my masonry, so right. it was not so good. Uh, yeah, but I, I grabbed the Oracle. I um, I grabbed the University of Saint Paul. Yeah. Still very very behind tech, especially uh, against Russia, but pretty anyone by that point yeah i guess you have a there's two competitions for that so it's only them that you're competing with it for and they don't actually tend to rush it as far as i've seen like this is a really nice wonder to get if you can yeah but obviously it's more important to just be safe first uh yeah so this is kind of a like extreme defense situation i am forced to my capital is only for pop something that is not good and tradition yeah definitely uh, i was forced to go uh like only no working specialist not no working good tiles because i don't even have uh, access to big tiles yeah. and just building units and not even go like with the settler because he had to stay uh yeah definitely not something good not not stones uh not a single stone on my capital so i was forced to good iron working to reveal some iron of which i got also none basically really? <laughs> the resource yeah this, the resources and i was kind of praying so when i will get to the call there would be a lot of coal in my, <laughs> my capital i would have a gray cup and it was no absolutely no coal uh no oil no um the, the other one which is uh um I aluminium aluminium no aluminium only the uranium so uh i i got but but by this point i was completely ahead so but it doesn't even matter but yeah so fair enough wrong if like if you see something like this on a tradition start normal people would probably panic or think the game is kind of uh, like uh lost yeah well it's not ideal video, of course yeah it, it is not ideal it's, um, kind of to be honest can you go to warsaw and see what i can build instead of building troops because i i don't think i can really buy something good of course granary granary. would be the yeah, yeah the second uh uh choice and of course maybe workers to to get but to be honest i needed those warriors anyway because um uh, sweden there are Zulus, there are a lot of barbarians because those uh as you can see those city states are mostly on snow so they were kind of useless in getting their units and uh, defending from barbarians yeah 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 fair enough i don't yeah. know why sometimes small it seems like small maps have way more barbs sometimes and like this is my map the battle map yeah. thing so it is quite a small one this is standard, your Pangea standard, with uh, low settings for, no, with, yeah, low settings for sea level. So more land than usual. Right. Because I experienced that AIs are stronger and you have, they have more cities, more bonuses. Yeah. For science and culture. And you are, and also because of larger cities, maybe not larger cities, but more cities, more production and you can, uh, hard them less like taking one city would hard them less than yeah standard. I think so. yeah yeah fair enough i guess i do remember when i was looking at the we were looking at the first one on turn 17 
uh, yeah. your warrior was down here, which is probably too far. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, you probably want to bring them back because so turn 25 is when they can start coming into your territory. And that's when I normally try and have my warrior back at my capital for so that mm. he can defend and so you don't get the yeah, raid things. I usually agree, but in this situation, I have uh, both my scout and my warrior far away, but uh, I was able to get like map uh, ruin. So yeah. I was able to see that there are still uh, unclaimed ruins. So right. That is why he went, he went uh, that way. And yeah, that was basically the reason. I think this warrior is not uh, worth that much if you have high production start like I do and good production start because I can make a warrior in like four uh, or three turns right now. Yeah. And I was making archers anyway. And there was no way he could go back. So. I prized this uh, gold, this culture, this uh, production I could get in my city ruins more than getting this warrior back. It was unfortunate. I, I was, of course, uh, wanted to have him back. Yeah. Uh, eventually, but, but he died because of the barbs on the, on the south. Yeah, fair enough. I guess the main thing I'm normally worried about is the getting raided thing. And I found out relatively recently that when you have a unit in yeah, your yeah. city, then they can't actually do the raiding. So even if they came and stood there now, you wouldn't lose any yields. But yes. Obviously, when they come with like five and pillage all your shit, that's also a problem. <laughs> yeah, that was a little uh, disheartening, but yeah, manageable, I think. Yeah. Like, really... Uh... The Pantheon was the, the main thing to uh, to have in this game. Uh, it's really through this bonus culture coupled with a free tech from getting into classical era of Poland. Uh, I was basically playing without unique uh, building, and it didn't. It doesn't even matter because the Pantheon and the Poland uh, unique ability is very strong. Oh yeah, I mean it. It's got to be the best in the game, the Poland uh, unique ability. Um, could be, could be. I think one of the strongest, if if not possibly the strongest, like the like one of the three uh, most powerful in the game, I think. And maybe maybe very well the case, as you say, that the strongest one. Yeah, I think that Ethiopia is the is the second. Uh, oh, really? Obvious. Yeah, um, like contender to this title because it 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 is basically the same structured uh, as Poland. It it can take you very tall, very wide, warmongering any uh, thing you want. It's so flexible. It's because it's free text. Yeah, but free. And the the unique building is is so easily that that guarantees you a religion. Yeah, but I mean, a tech is just not as good as a policy. A policy yes. is much better, in my opinion. Yes, I I would agree with that, of course. But kind of Poland, but coupled with a uh, faith and guaranteed religion, a stronger early game. Yeah, well, uh, the the, the building is good. Survive. I don't have to survive to ideology. Yeah. Uh, when I had ideology, it was kind of snowball out of uh, control. But uh, yeah, I think usually Ethiopia uh, and Poland, and the fact that I love about them or about the Netherlands or about uh, a couple of other ships, unlike Germany or uh, unlike Japan or. Uh, or France is that you are going to you are completely flexible, right? It's a free tech or free policy. You can get anywhere you you want because it's useful anyways. And with Germany, you have to maybe not go statecraft but care about city states. If you are playing as France, you have to conquer cities unless you will have uh, like with uh, Germany. You don't have friends or. Uh, Alliances, you don't get nothing from your yeah. unique ability. 
with France, you don't conquer cities, you will get nothing from your ability. Only yeah. slightly strength stronger. Uh, like so, it 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 forces a place. Type. The same with uh, Japan, uh, conquering cities, uh, getting the you uh, like uh, um, great generals, great admirals. Yeah. It for uh, the same as Syria, it forces you to to something, but you can have a great uh, like playstyle with anything with Poland. Yeah, and these sieves actually, the ones you're mentioning, they don't really actually help you do that. They just like say, oh, yes, you need to conquer cities, but don't give you any benefits to conquering cities. So you're just like, oh. <laughs> well, to be honest, like. France I guess this a combat bit, yeah. bonus, which is, uh, but it's, yeah, but it works like um, I, I get your point. It is definitely the case that you. I won't agree uh, on that point with Japan because Japan dojo plus plus samurai is just uh, yeah, yeah. You can't get like wrong with with going into authority or into going uh, like war stuff. Yeah. So it gives you one of the best like vehicles to conduct war in the game, but yeah, uh, like Cartage has this thing that uh, is very also flexible and like gives you gold so you can get anything you want from it. Yeah, uh, and for lighthouse, so yeah, it kind of reinforces your your usual goals. So I would agree completely that, for example, Germany has no. It has only benefit from doing something, not help when going for something. Yeah. Which sucks a bit. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I think, of course, uh, Germany is kind of competitor for Poland in the late game. It's absolutely strong if played correctly. Do you think, what, just because of the Hansas? Uh, yeah, both the Hansas coupled with the UA. Because the UA is kind of uh, painful to get, but it's very strong if you are a tradition. And with the Hansas, with the industry, with uh, like going for a lot of production stuff, with good religion, you can snowball as hard as Poland in the late game. Maybe not as hard, but uh, and not as um, not as uh, consistent because you have to get those. Yeah. City state, and you have to invest them instead of getting the use the things from just playing good and playing normally as Poland. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. I wanted initially to do this Tundra tradition start as Germany. I just when I tried to, I didn't roll any good Tundra starts. So, but I will, I will do it uh, in the future. I will do it soon. I think because I want to try. Not going to rationalism, but I want to try to go into industry. I wanted to want to go into industry and lumber mess with this game. Yeah, industry was so less powerful, and I was be still behind in text by the time I got into. And of course, because of uh, lots of iron and lots of um, like uh, other like coal and and other things, uh, and horses also. Uh, I was getting a lot of yields, uh, flat yields from science and production from the opener of uh, rationalism. Yeah, the strategic one. Yeah, so my cities were completely great on science and the production because of m most of my cities have like five or eight strategics in the borders. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, after the late game, I, I, I counted. Fair enough. Yeah, that's something I, I often I don't think too much about that one usually on rationalism, but I guess it is yeah the main one. It you is get amazing stuff. if you have a right turn. And generally, um, opener is one of the strongest things about the rationalism. Yeah, it is plus one science instead of plus two. In general, I have the feeling that openers are one of the strongest policies usually. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I definitely would have been looking at industry here. Well, should we should we skip ahead to something? Yes, uh, you can get. Uh, I think the next one would be real 
religion or maybe oracle race, but I think religion. Okay. 83. Yeah, I think religion would be sooner than oracle. Okay. Uh, yes, I wanted to go uh, like industry in my plans but when i was actually at this moment when i was able to get my uh, third policy tree uh, like rationalism was so much better than industry and to be honest i went to the glory of god uh, specifically because i wanted great generals to secure uh, my territory right. and uh, the other thing was because I was wanted to go industry, so I wanted great scientists to to be available to buy. Yeah, but yeah, it didn't happen in the in the long run, and I think it was the correct play. Uh, industry would take me a much longer to snowball. Well, the, I guess the main thing would be the plus two production from the lumber mills, which I would have assumed you built a lot of, but you said you didn't really use them. None in the capital. In many of my cities, only two or three were. Uh, in fact, I have mostly mines and uh, a lot of quarries, as think, you can see in Krakow, well, for example. Yeah, they they also count for the bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Fair enough. But, but the science was the deal breaker, and I had enough production from the uh, rationalist opener. So yeah, you can now have your thoughts and your questions because. Now you see the game how it evolved. Yeah, no, I, I, I get. That. If you're going for a science victory, like I would have probably gone industry just because it's a bit more flexible. But if you already have enough production, then obviously, and you just need more science, then rationalism does help. I think you're just a bit more vulnerable if you get attacked compared to industry. Yeah. Well yeah this was like uh, the the two among us were also the uh, the fact that i wanted to go industry and also i i knew i want to go white i have to go white it would be it it would not only be like available to me because normally going tradition late setting is not so good yeah but it would be available to me because of the, all these resources like look at the, the uh, north from Warsaw. yeah it doesn't look good now it just a lot of stone, like east from east from here, the snow okay. of also, yeah. But the city I settled with colonists there, it was completely amazing. Oh, there. Uh, by the way, yeah, it was it was most aluminum ma uh, quarries or mines with uranium and uh, <laughs> coal. So uh, you will see the yields from the rationalism from my pantheon from uh, all the stuff that i that i got so it would be amazing city completely yeah, as much productive as much uh, good as my just the cities that you see now mm. should we should we skip forward to there then that's probably a good place to go to and then we can see where everything else is as well because that must be fairly late yeah war and colonization the the upper one that would be oh that would that that would be only uh, when settling the city yeah uh, so uh, yeah that will be with the colonist and uh, the other one is with the Korea uh, Korea wiped with uh, to see how the city evolved okay cool because now it is, there is no the city it is uh, the colonist on an iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the situation by turn two hundred and two. Okay, so this is the Poznan is from uh, Pioneer, and it was one of my best cities, to be honest. That's a strange place. Think. Next, like one off the coast. Yeah, completely, completely, um, like deliberate. Yeah, to uh, have this ring of. Forest to hinder movement to um, like not allowing because I was sure the Kiev would be taken by Zulus. I was sure the Sweden already had Kathmandu and some other cities on the coast. Uh, that would be another front 
uh, that I would not be able to like defend my city from. Yeah, coastal cities are dangerous as tradition, and yeah, it uh, it has no uh, absolutely no uh, good tiles to work with on the coast. Even this fish, I I don't know uh, like this is only for fish uh, for food fish when I have like amazing tiles. Yeah. Beside. I like the great generals actually, to be honest. I think yeah. that was a pretty good decision on those, because otherwise they obviously would have their troops like right up here constantly and just be in a lot more danger. Can you open the economic panel on the like gold, gold per turn? Wow, so, everyone's well close. Can yeah, so uh as you can see, uh, the Poznan, which was settled much uh, later, is not, uh, and it has much better, uh, like, comparable production, science, gold. Gold is, gold is the least one, but everything else is, uh, is comparable to my other cities. Yeah. So what, this was where so, the pioneer, was it? Yes, this is the power power of late settling. If you have happiness, this city can have really good tiles. I wanted to settle it more strategically on a yeah, like on this forest after the river to but I thought like I would much rather have a good city that can pr produce me atomic bombs and tanks and something else and fossiliers and uh, with good really good tiles from the resources uh, and otherwise the Zulus will settle it and they will get border friction and I got no border friction from setting the city with Zulus so yeah were you were I mean did you consider coming and taking this because if you don't then see somebody else is going to take it absolutely not uh, like I had enough troops to put it also on this border Usually the Koreans were the vassals of someone, so like they were not completely uh, uh, relevant, and yeah. they were kind of two ages uh, behind. Uh, I finally did because I was forced uh, because they were vassalized by Sweden or Zulus or I don't remember, but. Yeah, it, it was not like uh, a priority for me. I could take them easily, but yeah, but I just mean if like Sweden conquers this city and then brings all their troops here, now you have like even more border with them. Yeah, yeah. I was if that would happen, I would be absolutely aware. I was like placing my uh, winged hussars around this city because the Sweden was at war with uh, right. Korea and not at war with me. So yeah, I was, I was like actively uh, trying to prevent that. Yeah, but it didn't happen in a in the long run. I I captured the city. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah, so right now the the um, like the terrain. Yeah, terrain on the north. I don't I don't work guilds as you can see in my satellite cities. Yeah, it's I'm a little bit like. I feel like they're quite. They don't have that much pop. Is that? Yeah, I would agree. And Is there a reason? As you can see, if you yeah, they have only enough uh, good tiles to work as much pop, and it will give me a lot more unhappiness, and I cannot spare unhappiness because I want another city. Right. They are completely, absolutely productive. There is no reason to grow them. It would if you hover over this uh, population. Uh, with not in not in the city. I think the city one was one of my best. I built uh, Taj Mahal in there because it has a good production. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but like Rocklo, it was really painful because uh, I this is the only city I uh, work specialist beside my capital Jeez. because there was completely no food to like get more uh, more population to get more mines. So. It was kind of weaker uh, in the atomic era and then the information era when it comes to uh, production, so I focused it only on the scientists. I guess you could have great general these, but 
It's a bit of a waste of a great general that Absolutely. you could lose on something yeah. else. It was much more important for me to get Poznan secured with yeah. uh, the salts because I was anticipating uh, like a great general from the south that will uh, take the two horses from me. Yeah, and yeah. That would be not done. And this two, and I had another one great general on a quarry, uh, stone quarry, uh, two tiles from Uppsala. So, uh, this is uh, this was the best place to. Oh, what well, you did put general. one here? Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I because was just thinking put, you should put, do that. <laughs> yeah, they put two manufacturers on a. Uh, this one and the one would be on the tile, yeah, right here. Wow. So, <laughs> they were kind of th th this tile placement was stupid, like great placement tiles from the AIs. Yeah, they do do that quite often. I'm guessing it's just by chance. They just don't consider it like that. It could get great general, but it feels like yeah. it happens relatively often. Um, yeah, so now you can see the yeah. Go on. Yeah, I would. I would just say. I disagree a little bit about the food actually because you do have like I really do think lumber mills are worth doing especially if you can get loads of them with the adjacency bonus I think you could have gone for ascetism here actually oh, I maybe I, I was contemplating that it was absolutely um, like kind of the unhouse I believe I wanted uh, but I opted for uh, for the height, I think it was so much stronger because, to be honest, up to this point, I had problem. Like my capital was already the biggest city in the world, I think. Yeah. Only for the Mecca, I think, and it was from medieval, from late medieval on. Uh, Mecca is uh, on the right. Like, okay. oh, it is already much larger than Mecca. Yeah. I think free, free population. So yeah. But yeah, uh, mm, I had a lot of food from my mm, from my uh, founder, uh, which is Apostolic Pass. It was amazing. Ah, uh, right. For me. Okay. I really liked this this one when, when going for tuition. It gave me a lot of culture. It gave me a lot of food. Uh, it meant kind of uh, longer. Enhancer because I had to spread my religion, but it was it was indeed great. Yeah, do you do you have anything to say about my religion? Is it like? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, like I said, I think I would have gone for I would have gone for food just because I think all of the forest tiles can be worth working if you have a load of lumber mills in them. To be honest, uh, no, uh, like I I see your point, and I would agree. If I was not tradition, uh, I have only so much happiness. I was going to war, be at war with many of the guys soon because I was kind of snowballing right now. Yeah. And I wanted another city which would need another spare happiness. Yeah. I wanted spare happiness to make capital. And the most, like, uh, the stuff that was the most important was I. If you hover over my cities like Krakow or Woods or anything, they all the war tiles that are war working are worked already. Okay, yeah, but you could so, still be working the guilds. Like I would normally, if I ever have a spare citizen or two on tradition, they're going straight into a, a culture guild. Uh, they would never. By that point, they would never uh, produce a writer in in the city. Yeah, but um, just for the uh, just for the extra culture. I mean, just for the yields. Uh, to be honest, uh, I uh, another like good tile I would have to for this city. Of course, I had in mind these two manufacturers and yeah. the cattle, but also uh, I knew there would be coal. I knew there would be aluminium. So uh, coal and aluminium is like uh, it would be kind of eleven or. In production and five science, yeah, like this, or six science. So it made it. It makes uh, the scientists redundant. And culture, I think. Can you get the economic screen to show? Because I don't know really if I was getting. Yeah, half of my culture is from the capital. Um, 
yeah, it it is not wrong play. It is like a normally you should do it. If I was going for a culture victory, of course. I was not even building the most of the guilds right now because first of all, the basic culture is covered by my pantheon. Uh, yeah. Second, it is covered by my uh, founder belief. Yeah. Third, it is covered by my unique ability. And uh, basically, yeah, that's it. I, I was thinking like it is. I wanted the cities to produce units that and buildings to get more science and to get more gold. That was really important for me because up, up to that point, I was kind of starting snowballing, but I was kind of behind on our science and, and policies in many to uh, Arabia and to Russia. And I was not sure how Sweden and Zulus will, uh, will like, yeah. I think by this point I I may have uh, been better already, but for the most Sorry, of the time yeah. it would, yeah. For the most of the time, just right before it was not the case. Yeah. So I was really worried about this this game, like like you see, I am building arsenals, I am building troops, um, and I really need gold. I was so gold starved in all of this game. I think tight was the best thing I could do. It saved me off many uh, like turns on investing in the building so uh and i could uh get like immediate 60 gold from it when i when i open it so, yeah yeah it's good because it, it caps out at 10 followers so you only need uh 10 population or whatever well 10 followers so a bit yeah. more than 10 pop to get the full bonus like i definitely would have gone for the food but it is more greedy but yeah, <laughs> mm, yeah. But uh, I I know what you are thinking. If you are thinking going into industry, going into food is kind of better, right? And if you, and the main reason I think if for this playstyle would be going for less cities and not building cities with colonies and pioneers. So I see your point. Like going completely tall, and I am not going tall here, to be honest, with my satellite series. Well, you can still, like, the happiness is manageable. Like, you're not too bad on it. And we mentioned before, well, last time, I guess, about just locking cities. Like, if you ever get to the point where not you start really. needing it, then you can lock the cities. Not really. It is only because I am completely aware about my needs of my cities. If you... I am not going to, for example, if you hover over the po population in Rocklow or in Lord. Right. Uh, no, the pop the population are like the number fifteen. Yeah. Oh, not not in the storm, but I would just completely explode my. It is not on the storm, but mostly it would be given me like seven or eight with each of my citizens, yeah. and not a lot of good tiles to work. Like you can see. Uh, work tiles, and I am really not uh, not having enough workers. I my workers are very slow. They have to build rail railroads. They have to focus on uh, tiles like uh, strategics in a new city. Yeah, that will be placed. So, so I was playing it more like uh, production and like, yeah, more like production focus. And because also of this international situations. I was really aware, like, I was really um, afraid of cults and Sweden and Zulus and all the trade routes I, I would uh, completely lo lose. So, um, yeah, I was trying to play safe on that one. Well, that's why you go industry, go massive production, just like crank out whatever you need. Atom yeah, bombs. But, yeah, but. Uh, I agree. I agree completely. But to be honest, because I went production and development in other ways, like not uh, not uh, focusing on food, but focusing on this uh, this good production tiles, I had discovered. Now the thing that I needed most right now was science. Yeah. To because I still even if industry, I cannot go toe to toe with cults. And with Sweden, Sweden, and with uh, 
Zulus. So the only thing that will help me is the territory, is like the placing, of course, the yeah. tiles and so on, the citadels, and more advanced units that than they have. So um, I I uh, think that it was the correct decision because I had already good production in my cities. Fair enough. What uh, churches? Was going order anyway, so. Oh, really? Yeah, churches were very good. Church. Oh, they're in buildings. Yeah, no doubt. So. What, uh, were you going for the pressure? The pressure and the uh, culture and the faith. Uh, because plus the culture, plus for faith. Yeah. It is a very nice yield. And unhappiness from boredom, as you can see, most of my happiness is from boredom. Or it was at some point of the game. I don't remember it. at this point. Yeah. I had uh, real problems with uh, other, other things like the gold. I, I don't, didn't have problems with production. My sister was productive. Uh, but I had problems with poverty and from boredom. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and of course, the pressure. If you can go to religion screen and see the breakdown of how many cities in which religion, what religions. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that speaks for itself. So, yeah. Yeah, it does work nicely on the, the Pangea maps. The pressure, yeah. especially, I'm guessing, yeah, you were uh, spreading early. With yeah, the, I was um, spreading us as hell. It was a late, late enhancer for me. I was spreading very much. You could have just uh, taken one of Felty, you know. I mean, you're getting the extra policies. Uh, yeah, especially because I think the Felty uh, opener is one of the best policies in the game. Yeah. Uh, w whatever you are going for. But to be honest, I'm kind of aesthetics guy. So <laughs> uh, I just want to have six... Uh, Police is finished in every of the trees. Yeah, it I is annoying when you get to that. five and you're like, oh, do I finish this or start on the yeah. this one? Especially like Felty was not uh, was really bad for me this game. Uh, I think the, the the finisher is very good for, but nobility. I was not going for for something like that. Uh, the I had enough production, and nobility is about production. Yeah. about happiness so it's it, it, it is not what i wanted uh i had a sweden which have filthy so and also the zulus and i knew that i was be able to, to go and yeah of course we can have our discussion about if artistry was better but because it is usually do but i just don't like artistry mm -hmm. at all to be honest and in this game i think stagecraft was completely comparable and by the late game, uh, from the subtle networks uh, policy, you get plus three uh, percentage science and culture per active spies to in your capital. Yeah, uh, it is massive. But the science that is generated by the allied cities, you can ho hover over the allied cities to see that I was getting like five or eight from each. So. Yeah, I think that uh, yeah. that thirty five is the total. I think. Really, I, I was wondering what this scholasticism is. Uh, yeah, like you see, five signs. So, not really something good, but yeah, I like, I very like stagecraft for tradition. To be honest, if you are going for science. Yeah, well, it, I would it is harder. So, yeah, I think if you're gonna work like. If you're going to go a bit wide as well and work specialists in the other cities, yeah. you get the bonus to specialists here. I get what artistry is not like, yeah, it's not amazing. You get like a free great person. You do get the extra gold, which you said you needed. That's actually fairly significant, very, the amount that you get from that. Yeah, very little. Um, yeah, mostly it's mostly culture and, and tourism. Yeah, and something like it is mostly about uh, like golden age of synergy, which um, I told taught myself to get without it. 
Yeah. Uh, there are many wonders. There are many other stuff that you can get golden age from. So uh, if you focus on production, you will get the wonders like Taj Mahal or Notre Dame. I was not able to secure Notre Dame, but I got Taj Mahal. And uh, yeah, usually there are some other. There's also religion. I, I my religion wasn't focused on that. But anyway, there are many many ways to to avoid artistry, and I think I, I generally like statecraft in uh, in general. It is more science like focused, but very little culture, of course. Yeah, there's no one else with statecraft as well, which makes it better. Uh, by this time, uh, before there was a powerful Germany that I really feared about the late game with. There was and, a Germany? Uh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, between Arabia and uh, Sweden, no, uh, east from here. Jesus. Yeah, exactly here. So you can see Berlin, Munich, Cologne. Uh, there was a powerful Germany once, but no more. Yeah. Sweden, to be honest, did a really good job with conquering Korea and Germany. Yeah. The main mistake was if they cannot like go for me, they should go with Russia. Yeah. Because, yeah, but it didn't happen. Attacking Russia is no fun either, though. Um, after some point, yeah. After the Austrox. Yeah. Um, so what was the... Were you going for science victory here? Was that the plan? Um, yes, but I found myself in a situation when I was shy like 10 votes from domination. Uh, yeah, from, from Diplo. Yeah, from Diplo. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess it's actually not as hard as you would think to get the votes. The harder thing is to get the stuff before pass, like the United Nations and stuff. Um. Yes, I I don't know how I voted the United Nations, but it was mostly because I had nearly as much votes as the rest of the world because of the the Germany was not important and the Korea was not important and they kind of ignored the city states. Yeah. And I was yeah. Generally, there are so many. Not by this point, but uh, some some point from from now, and kind of. There are things about this game that I would like to talk about in more detail. I don't remember, but they're kind of uh, like, look at my trade routes. I don't even use my trade routes. <laughs> and this is this was something like that for most of the game. And I don't really think you need all the food internal trade routes to capital. I had only one for my game. And even with statecraft, it was not so important for me. Like, for, like you see, getting a public school in Poznan, getting uh, arsenals on the front uh, with Sweden, uh, getting general development and like production and something like that. It was far more important for me to get to science and, and production than to focus on something like trade routes and so on. Um, I know it is not. Uh, optimal and people don't play like that normally um, and I play different <laughs> yeah I mean I guess you already have like very high pop in the capital thanks to all the food yeah. from the holy city like I said I, I definitely would have tried to grow these other cities as much as I could get away with just for like maximum things and I and if they didn't have a good tile then I would just put them working a culture specialist because the more policies the better I guess you actually, with the religion, you do have quite a good path to the Diplo victory, though, because if you pass a world religion, then yeah. you get lots more votes. But there was no uh, way I could pass the world religion. The hmm. only other faction was Korea and uh, the Zulus. And Sweden was before, all with my religion. But uh, after they conquered... Uh, Germany, they became the head of the Germanist religion. So. You can actually get it past, though. Like, it's not as much of a thing as it used to be. They they won't, like, really? be unanimously nay it anymore. Yes, I remember this. I was worried that it would be 
no one thought of where it could come in. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure you would have got it passed with this. Like, And you can do the thing with the buying votes as well if you need some extra. Like, They generally will sell some to you. Unless it's like completely against their interests. But they don't seem to care so much about religion anymore. Or world religion. Yeah, so we would play like completely different this game because I was focusing on like statecraft and uh, rationalism, which is uh, not as production uh, good and not as developmental good. Yeah. Uh, but I, I kind of feel that I had enough development, especially if I was going wide with, with all of the cities. Yeah. Uh, and order gave me a lot of, because it gave me a... Uh, when I adopted it, it gave me immediate. Uh, in nearly most of my cities, a uh, military academy, a uh, research lab, and a uh, factory. Yeah, order is really so, nice with Poland because you get it earlier. So you can get those factories and yeah. research labs before you would as anyone else. It's very nice. Yeah, so I know that you are also not a fan of. Maybe not fun, like you didn't experiment so much with late settling. Yes. So, and I was, and I was completely, uh, like, positive that I will settle at least two or three cities. You settled more than just this one. No, uh, I mean uh, the pause nine that is already settled with a pioneer, and this one that that will be settled. Yeah, uh, I wanted to originally did a third one, but. It was completely no point, and this city would be absolutely amazing because every tile would be with resource, basically. <laughs> uh, so, where did you settle yeah, this so, one in the end? Uh, exactly on the tile that uh, it is right now. Oh, on really? the iron. Okay. Yeah. You get like it is completely useless to me to get the buffs, but because this culture in the city would be mostly only because of the pantheon, it would not have like guilds or anything. But it is still. It was still very nice, and I wanted this deer that was unused on the on the right, on the bottom right. So, uh, and I wanted also the city to work this one town that there are no workers on. So, uh, because my my Warsaw would already have like three towns. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, it, it happens really <laughs> in my game also. Uh, so. But he did declare in a in a long run, and also Shaka did declare. I don't know. And look, this city is already it has forty seven science. That but is no, pretty but, good. But, but, it's Nick these though. Yeah, but uh, yeah. To be honest, I took it off from the uh, academies because, of course, the academies are walked by the by the. Uh, capital i actually don't always do that um like academies are one of the things that i will generally spread out especially to try and get rid of the illiteracy because there's no actual benefit to having it in the capital compared to in another city uh to be honest uh in my opinion just look at the percentage modifiers to science and uh and the capital oh uh, yeah yeah i guess so i think i am getting already something like 50 or yeah 50 i guess no 60 so uh you get the great works one as well yeah fair enough yeah and the statecraft one which will be amazing because it is only now something like plus nine and will be plus 30 to science and to culture well i think this is just culture i think the science is the is the great works i don't think there's uh, a science uh, one uh -huh. Oh, so I was I was uh, mistaken on that one. Yeah, yeah, you are right. But of course, the tradition like bonus has twenty five for each yield in a city and and so on. I never spread out as tradition. I spread out a lot, but maybe not a lot, but spread out in a most important cities that I want to get productive and good. And you know? yeah, uh, when I don't have percentage modifiers as progress and and uh, authority, but. Yeah, right now you can see that I use, I don't use uh, my other cities for specialist nor for uh, great uh, person improvements. So 
I am playing like uh, capital is tall. The rest is going only for production for units and for buildings. The rest is kind of progress. Um, right. Yeah, this is definitely, I mean, this is definitely fairly different to how I play. Like, I normally, I try and spread out my great person improvements. I usually put most of the manufactories around the capital. And then the academies, I either put them in other cities or I put them somewhere where I can swap them between. Um, mm -hmm. Because I want to be able to work as many specialists as possible. And then I can use the other cities to work like the great person improvements. Because I don't think, I think a lot of these modifiers you do get in other cities anyway. It's like only if you build like Porcelain Tower and then yeah, the Rationalism one because you'll have most of yeah. your great works in your capital. And the tradition one? Uh, uh, 10%, yeah. Is it, is it 10 or 20? 10% um, all yields. 10%. Oh. Um, I just feel yeah, like so you end up having too much stuff in the capital if you're trying to work specialists, have production to build wonders, and work academies as well. But to be honest, as you can see, uh, yeah, because if you play without a good food production like Fanda, like I do, I am not trying to spread my specialists and to work them a lot. Like you can see the artists. Yeah. I don't work artists. I don't work musicians at all because they're useless to me, basically. I want only writers. <laughs> I want only... Uh, and I have some of them because of the girls anyway. So... Uh, just for the for the uh, without specialists, the girls also produce a good person. But I am trying to. Uh, I only work free scientists in the capital because I am trying to delay my scientists after I get the policy with uh, yield uh, with better yields for specialists, yeah, uh, like scientists and the more late game stuff. So, um, yeah, it is definitely I think completely different, but. Uh, entirely viable way to, to, to play like tradition and of course I would play differently if I go for artistry and for uh, culture I think if, if you weren't Poland then there would be some issues with just not having enough culture because honestly I would be working all of this yeah I would have an artist guild a musicians guild and I would be working them probably in other cities too like yeah and yeah, probably a couple of guilds in the other cities. But to be honest, by the next, say, by the next 30 or 40 turns, I would be five policies ahead. So it would be exactly the five, uh, yeah, Korea. Uh, be exactly the the amount that I get from uh, uh, from uh, Poland anyway. So it, it, it would be kind of, I would be kind of even with other civilizations. Anyway, yeah, but with the bonus uh, policies, generally give more culture as well. Like each um, policy helps you to get more culture. Yeah, not really because of the state driven rationalism. I think with tradition, yeah, but you also have to like get uh, uh, have in mind that. I am getting a. I was getting a really nice culture from my founder, I believe, and from the yeah, uh, yeah, and of course this pantheon and uh, churches. And look yeah. at this city. Yeah, <laughs> of course I don't work most of them. It is no use to work the the deer or the the stone right now, but the yields on a on this are so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is <laughs> I, I I thought I, I changed that because it was seven seven uh turns to next citizen. So look at my cities like uh they have enough food, so there was no point to get us citizen. And yeah. to be honest, I'm kinda jealous because Warsaw is not getting a lot of good stuff. Not not real a lot of resources are in Warsaw. Right. And the other cities on the tundra are exploding with, with tiles. But you can see like here, I mean, these are very good tiles to work, so that's why I'm yeah. saying more population would have been 
like it definitely wouldn't be useless. To be honest, more population would be kind of plus eight production in a city that already has something like 200. Uh, I want to, and my happiness is already 59. And I am going to have more wars and more trade deals broken. Yeah, yeah. So um, when playing this tradition, uh, capital toll with the rest of my cities wide and kind of production focused, I, I don't really don't want to do that. Okay, I think I should turn down the resources. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, mm, I, I put loads well, in snow because I was like, snow is so useless. Otherwise, like you might as well. Yeah, have... mines or snow are no different. Like I get in seven science and more than ten production on each of those mines. Yeah, but it is only look. It should be toned down, but, but like, I think uh, this city is a very late game city that has its coast. It has its cost to be founded. Yeah. And like Warsaw is not benefiting from this uh, resource placements at all. Yeah. The city where I could get the most of it, it doesn't have all of this. So, and many people would just disagree with the city. But to be honest, by this point, it 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 is only 70 turns after it was founded. It has all the same buildings that the other cities have. It has amazing yields, which basically are the same, which my other cities have. And no of the buildings I can build uh, is useful to me in any way. Were you... Uh, okay, we're, we're nearly top of manufactured goods. Did you yeah. have any Most world of the projects? Uh, yeah, I wanted to get... Uh, no, I had only this one uh, with uh, United Nations, I think. Okay. I didn't want... I don't like the things I did... Well, the other thing I really wanted to try in this game was uh, not working processes. Not a single process in the whole game. <laughs> because my last game, I was working processes very hard. Really? And uh, yeah, but this game, I wanted to play it because I don't like processes as a game mechanism. I think it it is just wrong. Yeah. Um. So I didn't want it to make something like what's fair processes to culture, uh, by great writers from faith and so on. No, um, <laughs> I wanted to play it as uh, normal as I can. Uh, it worked anyway. So. Yeah, once you're already ahead, there's definitely a lot of games where I honestly haven't worked processes because, I mean, I'm just mega gr greedy. I build everything <laughs> in every city just for the sake of it. Like, normally I would say now I only work processes just before I'm getting the great people. That's how I try and do it. Um, And that is why I don't do you use it because it's kind of... I already used a lock population yeah. uh, thing, so I think it would be straight cheating if I would do both. Because the, the AI cannot do such a calculation. Right. So, and I am really snowballing pretty hard right now, so I don't need it. Yeah, yeah. It's more, it's something you have to do in those situations where you're like having to min max to actually win. Yes, yes, yes. The AIs, I uh, mean, they're fairly slow here, do you think? They weren't for the most of the game. I was so aware of Russia, and uh, there was a kind of time like when Arabia went rationalism that was really um, not fun until I... And I was still considering going like to rationalism force. Uh, yeah. Industry, but... It was not really, not really funny, especially with uh, constant wars. With I had wars with uh, kind of long wars with Sweden. Yeah. So yeah. most of my cities really couldn't get more guilds because they had to build units. They couldn't get guilds because they have to build defensive buildings. They couldn't have more guilds and work specialists because they have good production to not 
like swim in unhappiness yeah. because of neglected other buildings. So yeah, but um like I think the game went pretty well. Of um, course. Yeah, I'm yeah, just I, confused. I'm asking atomic bombs by, by this point. Yeah. I just feel like I'm yeah, I'm confused why like I feel like they should be a bit further along, but it doesn't seem like they've been having hard games. Like Sweden's been doing pretty well conquering stuff. Russia's been doing their thing. Yeah, Russia was really um good in the uh, first part of the game. Yeah. But at some point, like I denied them the the, the best pantheon, so it would benefit early like most of the civilization in these games, because uh, this game, uh, Russia, and uh, the other one was the cults, and Sweden all have uh, all, many starting areas on uh, Andra start. Yeah. Well, they have a so decent pantheon cults, anyway. Well, yeah, but they have great altar, which is completely uh, useless for them. And I don't, I want to like want to see this code that, that way the traditional factions will never get this. because It's completely uh, useless right. for them. Well, too many of them love to get that golden age. Uh, gives yes. twenty percent in capital as well, which is also really bad. Um, really, really bad. If you are going to artistry. I was. I. I don't like artistry, so I don't know. But I was thinking that it is really good in a late game. I think even if it's I was doing full great people, it would be like maybe it wouldn't be like I definitely want that. Really? Yeah, but um, if you have artistry, if you have tradition, if you have other things, I think. Yeah, the vine uh, It is. Uh, you have a lot of percentage yields in your capital already. Yeah, but it does, so, it doesn't stack well. So it doesn't stack like multiplying on top of that. It just is another. Yeah, it's added. just flat. Uh, like twenty percent plus twenty percent means forty percent. Not yeah. The uh, yeah. So like here. It would be plus uh -huh. 40, because it yes. would be 20% of the 200 base, which is reasonable, but it's not like, I don't, I don't think it's really that much, like, <laughs> out of your total culture compared to what some of the other ones can give you. Especially by this point of the game. Yeah, and this is about as good as it can be, or close. So would you, like, consider... Consider uh, taking this to like thirty three, maybe. Yeah, well, it could be increased. Better. I just, I think, like, unless you're one city challenging, or I think if you have, if you can't spread your religion, obviously, it's the best one. But if you can spread your religion out to more cities, like these scale so much better, ceremonial burial and way of yeah. transcendence. To be honest, if I was getting, uh, if I was making one city challenge, I would go apostolic tradition completely, like without any, um, without any uh, considering. Yeah, exactly. Else. It's culture and food. With, with Tantra start, I, I was able to get the, the biggest city in the game, and um, this is the the thing that you want with. Once it turns out, I assume. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't have I that much to... faith, though. We want to. Yeah, maybe with something like Goddess of Beauty would be the best pick because of uh, focus on the wonders. Yeah. Uh, and uh, great works, but well, maybe I will try this once it turns with uh, Babylon. Okay. Uh, an apostolic tradition. It's, I feel kind of much stronger about understanding tradition after this game. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it showed me that uh, you can still have uh, different priorities, both for your capital, for your policies, and for your satellite cities and 
uh, late uh, late settling than uh, usual is considered good for tradition. Uh, one city challenge sounds so rough, though, man. Just like yeah, it is. even beyond just it being difficult, just not national wonders, not like internal trade routes, no supply cap. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, the national wonders I think would hurt the most. Uh, because Varska is so good for tradition. I think the base is around thirty or twenty five for the for the national monument. Oh really? What if you have one city? Yeah, even if you have one city. Oh, you know. And they like, scale with three or five more for each of your cities. Yeah. Like Oxford University is I don't know what that you is. You would but... never get to Oxford probably. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Because Oxford would require like forty four I don't think it would be possible. It may be an information era. Yeah. But yeah. Do you have any like uh, thoughts about the, this game? Because um, it, it, it kind of looks different than from the situation that was when the barbs were attacking Warsaw and pillaging all my time. <laughs> I guess I forgot to ask then just how long how long was that an issue for? Uh, how long was that an issue? What, what do you mean? Like how long were the barbs causing you problems? To be honest, on a tile when the uh, the city up north now is, the barbs were until industrial era. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't spare I couldn't spare troops. From war with Sweden and from uh, like not having enough troops on the border with cults. Yeah. Uh, because the the route was like five turns in every in every direction. Uh, I was blocking them with, with two units because I couldn't even take them out. Yeah. So they were a menace. <laughs> At one point, they they uh, pillaged my academies on the deer. So, she. Uh, it turned out very good anyway. Yeah, true. I guess uh Well yeah, what so like what do you think was the do you think it was the founder belief that really like kinda made this game for you? Because obviously it doesn't look great when you're getting attacked by Bob, so like at what point did you suddenly get ahead and why? I think there were many like power spikes. Well, maybe not like power spikes, but power spikes are something different. Though. Things that gave me a lot of power in this game. Yeah. And it really starts with the Pantheon. And it was a combination of Pantheon, Panda, uh, the fact that AIs are slow and generally, well, not so in all because we. The Russia and the uh, Arabia were at some point were well, like fifteen x behind uh, uh, above me. So uh, by the medieval, so it was not that uh, funny. Fifteen x ahead uh, of you. I think at some point, yeah. You know, yeah, especially Russia was. Uh, they, uh, they were grabbing all the all the wonders. Oracle was the only one I was I was left with. Yeah. And to be honest, in Renaissance there was a really like a change because they suddenly stopped doing all the wonders. So I built both uh Leaning Tower and then uh, the Taj Mahal and Porcelain Tower in two of my cities. Right. So that were really nice, and uh, I also got a lot of. I was focusing very much on engineers this game, and I think it was a correct decision because when I revealed coal, I was having so many hopes that I have many coal around my cities, and I had no coal around my cities <laughs> because uh, really it was only from the from the upper uh, city and. 
nothing yeah. anywhere else. So I was forced to build a Slater ML. I was basically uh, forced to build Brother Brigade because of uh, uh, the military supply cut. Right. So, uh, yeah, but after that, the, the Pantheon, the founder, the Poland UA, which was which was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so uh, I think the last yeah, the kind of they had production, they have the text. I don't know why why they didn't get uh more wonders, to be honest. In in medieval it was very tight. I couldn't get Notre Dame, I couldn't get some of the wonders I started to build and then was beat by in one like in the same turn I started to build, they, they were building them. So yeah, uh, I think the one issue was they are slower on religion. They are not slower on science or uh, culture. They are slower on religion, uh, and that allowed me to to get many spreading. So food was really abandoned in my capital, and culture was really abandoned. Um, the other thing is with this pantheon and with the good clusters of resources. Yeah. And the, I think the fact that I didn't prioritize growth in my cities, but prioritize as much as I can, the gold, the science and production. Right. Um, I think this gave me enough development to catch up with the AIs and then uh, like completely eclipse them because yeah uh, it would be it would be much better if i was open to mixing policies especially <laughs> because i went to the glory of god anyways but i am just not uh like don't want to do that because artistry opener industry opener filthy opener uh yeah this this three policies instead of finishing statecraft which gave me nothing right uh, would be much better but yeah why play this way be when you can play normal way like fair more fair to the ai way and still completely snowball out of control um well it looks like you could get a diplo win so statecraft will not be completely useless in that sense mm, yeah correct but i had no idea that germany would be wiped out it was unthinkable because Germany was one, was one of the strongest. Really? By the medieval, yeah. Hmm. It went free cities tradition, so, and it went ascetism. So, right. they had some power. But it's just uh, the Sweden were snowballing. I guess they have quite bad That's... land. They're just like flat land in the middle of everyone. Yeah, exactly. And, like, Nobody liked them, and each of civilization got one city from them. So it was like with the with Poland in, in real history, when uh, Russia and Prussia and uh, Austria were divining of this like uh, weak Poland between themselves. It, it happened to the Germany this game, like three three warmongers that were kind of uh, you know uh, more modern in their policy one kind of medieval state that was still uh doesn't didn't have a modern uh government and, and modern uh, administration to 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 efficiently get something done like army or the the industry or the trade right so yeah they were completely like destroyed if you have this kind of terrain and you are tradition and you are with war on free fronts you can't really win that yeah, you just have to go flipping authority. Especially like the uh, Arabia basically get two cities beside Ber very close beside Berlin. So even if they wanted to uh, settle more to get more production and more secure place, it was not possible. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I guess so we don't know what they chopped down because they might have chopped down some of the forests they could have used. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's true. But I think in this plains area around the horses and the coal, I think there wasn't really much. Yeah. For us. Fair enough. Um, I but guess. Do you, you can I go. Your, map, yeah, your maps are too much heavy on Tundra and not on Tangles, I think, compared to the normal maps. Like, I see a clear. Uh, the, the disparency between those two types of uh, right. the jungle start only on his has a uh, good uh, jungle start out of also oh no I think also Korea had uh, jungle start you mean that the the people who are in the tundra do better uh, yeah okay. I think especially with good pantheon for the and a lot of a lot of AIs would go for Tantra Pantheon or the Camps Pantheon. But yeah, the planes and the uh, I generally don't like jungle stars. The forests are so much better. Um, yeah, true. And it's kind of a long term play to get to jungles. Uh, but I don't really know what to do with jungle then. Just like <laughs> not have them in there. <laughs> uh, no, I think. Uh, increasing because there's also this preparancy between occurrence of resources on yeah. the tundra, and uh, I think getting more strategics on uh, uh, jungles would help. Yeah, and taking them away from uh, from uh, tundra, not not by much, because as you can see, if Warsaw had even less resources, it would be not fun to play. Yeah. At the beginning, but in a long uh, later, like all those resources that are unused by the Russia up from the, the capital, <laughs> yeah, in the snow, I think from the snow, maybe not even from the tundra, but from the snow, they, they, because it is not really the tundra that has the problem, yeah. tundra has just better start because it is usually a mining or a camp luxury with forests yeah so tundra is in fact very good i think it is the snow that is getting the most resources and yeah because for the sure. tundra is close to snow it kind of snowballs the thing is that this um i actually didn't change the resources that much from the the like continency map the original one so this was more like this was designed for that when there's not really that much snow. Like there'll be like one or two tiles, and you'll probably get a resource on at least one of them to make it mm -hmm. actually worth it. Like going up there, but on here there's actually like big areas of snow, so it's a bit ridiculous. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But. Yeah, I would agree with that because like. On normal maps, there is hardly any snow. I mean, normal continents and normal Pangea. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but AI is not able to use snow effectively. And the player, to be honest, uh, like, how many people would go for that, for that late CD with the Pioneer? Yeah. Well, would you, I mean, you only went for it because of the <laughs> the amount of resources there. Like no, like if if you uh, get the save from the previous one when I was settling them, I will had no idea about the oil and aluminium and uranium. Right, I, right. I think I only knew iron coal. <laughs> I was thinking that it would be much worse because it would have to work snow uh, snow deer. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of, I, I was thinking, but it, it would still be a good city with that tundra uh, stone and uh, snowstone. Yeah. So I went for it anyway, but it was only for production. I wanted to like have a second city to get my units because I anticipated uh, some real wars in the late game. Yeah. How, how aggressive were the AIs this game? Was it reasonable? I think Sweden should be more aggressive, but 
they calculated that Korea is uh, like um, weaker, I yeah. think, because I I went only to, uh, into two wars with Sweden. They were hostile all the time, but they didn't have troops like they now do. They don't even have troops on the border, so I can take their city, but the city would be useless. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. The, they kind of, and to be honest, I uh, increased the aggression by 20%, the percentage modifier for going for war. Yeah. For both AIs against AI and AI against player. Yeah. Uh, yeah, same. So, but I disabled bribe wars globally. Yeah. Uh, because I think it was completely broken. <laughs> I couldn't declare war on anyone because, like, Zulus get, got five defensive pacts with this. Yeah, that still needs to be sorted. I don't think it is. I think the bribe wars is much better now, apparently. But I think defensive pacts are still the same. It doesn't make any sense, man. They just get to medieval and they're just like... Everybody gets two defensive packs, even if they have no troops. Even though they're supposed to yeah. be like, oh, who's like powerful? Who do I want to ally with? But for some reason, they just Apart all from the player. Yeah, because player, even if the player, even if I have a lot of troops of authority, I can still, I can still pledge to protect. Even if I have two vassals and I conquered many good cities, and I am still the like the main threat to yeah. anyone. I can't pro pledge of protect, and I can't get a defensive pact. Yeah, well, that's just done off uh, this. Like, you just need to be in the top half of the demographics thing. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm guessing there's six civs now, so you'd need to be third, and then you'd get it. Yeah, maybe something like this. But, um... It is just useless anyway. I think like there are some uh, mechanics of the game that on DAT just are not seeing uh, as much use. Yeah. Because of the min maxing and uh, like I didn't build a single diplomat here. It was mostly through really going for statecraft. Yeah. I didn't have production anyway, so. Uh, well, you go full industry and buy them. <laughs> um, really, with my gold, it was not really possible. Yeah, yeah. I would have not not uh, like not enough gold to upgrade my units, and then the people can just because it look now it looks like it is all right, but in the sense of the industrial era. It was really very. I was really read about during the wars with Sweden. So, but they did attack, and you just repelled them. It wasn't like you were worried, but they never yeah. actually attacked. Yeah, I had to completely, uh, like, get delay my normal buildings, and my cities were completely switched both with my capital to get the units. Uh, it was a very uh, dangerous war both times for me with Sweden. Yeah. They were basically, they had Krakow in a, uh, on a very low health. And only by the arrival of the Winged Hussars, I think by by the second game, which all were, by the second war, were, uh, were, they were already obsolete. They were still very good. Yeah. Uh, to deal with uh, other guys. But I had to trade many units because I had to sometimes kill the unit, and I know that my Hassa because of the because he will jump on the uh, on the unit on the tile that was occupied by unit. Yeah, he will be killed. So I had to train uh, another one. So it was a normal game with having more efficient kills ratio. Yeah, I had to trade some units one for one. Uh, but because I prioritized not the food but and the guilds, but production and the gold, uh, this was the way I could achieve this. Yeah. 
Fair enough. All right. Well, I guess we will end it here then, unless you've got other stuff to say. Um. Yeah, I don't know what what to say anymore. Uh, if people will have like uh, questions about this game or something like this, yeah, uh, I encourage anyone to like try tradition tundra and try tundra in general. This is not about tundra. Are not about start. They are a mix of a very good. Uh, if you can secure food some way, uh, you will have a mix of good production and uh, like good development for your cities, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Just go straight trapping and hope for the yes. best. <laughs> yeah, hope for it. It basically can make your game or just make your starting location useless. And but the one thing is go straight for trapping. The other thing is. Uh, are they shrine first on Stonehenge to get the uh, uh, Tundra Pantheon? But it, yeah. it's not like you don't need it in every game. There are other good Pantheons, of course, but um, if you are going to get really good like free locations with heavy Tundra start, like I did with uh, Krakow, which had a lot of stone and had a lot of deer and other things with at all tundra tundra i think it is it is definitely worth it to sacrifice some other things to get the the, the pantheon first yeah it does depend on the map script as well though so yeah but i think in general in community too, if you are not playing the normal maps but community too, that have a more tundra and more resources on tundra in general yeah it, yeah it is very good yeah uh, yeah, I know. I mean, I've definitely had a lot of good games on Tundra. don't think I've ever done one on YouTube, but definitely some enjoyable ones. As all three policies as well, it can work for all of them. Like, you wouldn't usually go tradition, but it can work. Um, like, to be honest, I think that tradition is the strongest on the Tundra. Maybe tradition or authority, because progress needs, like, outside food. To, because I like to go progress artistry and then specialist in my other cities. Right. Uh, so I think the progress would be the worst on the Tantra, to be honest. <laughs> well, I'll say the exact opposite. And we'll end it on that note. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, All man. Right. Yeah. And yeah, leave your comments and stuff, suggestions, or whatever. We are open to everything. See you guys next time. See ya.